In this video, we're going to talk about some additional modeling approaches in Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about two additional modeling approaches in Blender. I want to take a quick second to talk about what we've learned so far in our Learning Blender Slowly series. Now, basically what we've done is we figured out how we can manipulate geometry by doing things like moving, rotating, or scaling, or even by taking faces or edges and extruding them to create more geometry. What we're going to do in this case is we're going to talk about two additional modeling approaches, specifically vertex modeling and curve-based modeling, so you can figure out if they work for you. Uh, I don't intend to go down the path of using these as they're a little bit more obscure in terms of their application. I find that working with a mesh body and extruding edges and faces is a much more straightforward workflow. So we're going to get started by going to a new design. And we're going to hide our camera and our light. We don't really need to see those. I'm going to go into edit mode. And one thing we should note that when we're using vertex modeling is we don't really have a way to add a vertice. When we're do using this modeling approach, we need to start with something. So I'm going to start with this vertex. And we can either hit Shift D to duplicate it and just create a vertex. Or we can select this, go to Selection, and Invert. And then we can use Delete. So under the Mesh option, we can go to Delete and select Vertices. And that'll leave us with the last vertex, so the one that we didn't have selected. So either option is fine. If you use the Shift D option, then just get rid of everything else. But now that we have a vertex, I'm going to go to my X view. And we're going to be using Extrude. Now with vertices, we have Extrude Vertices. And you'll notice it doesn't show any shortcut key here but it's actually gonna be E on the keyboard, just like it is for edges and faces. So with that vertex selected, I'm gonna hit E, and I'm just gonna begin extruding. Hit E again, and E once more. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Shift select all of these, and I'm gonna duplicate them. I'm just gonna say Shift D, and I'm gonna move them in the X direction. So I've just essentially created two sections. Now there are a couple things that we should note here. If I select everything, I can go to Face, and I can do a Fill, which will fill between those if we have it completely connected. So that's going to be the trick here, is we need to make sure that our profiles are perfectly closed. If we want to do another method, we are able to bridge between edges. So inside of here, what we can do is we can bridge edge loops, and that'll allow us to put them together without closing it off. But let's take a look at what we would do in order to close this off. So I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to extrude that vertice in the X direction. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Again, E and then X to do it in the X direction. Then I'm going to merge these two together. Now, this is going to be M on the shortcut key. You can also go to our mesh menu, go to Merge, and At Last. So we're going to do the same thing over here. This time I'm going to use M At Last. And now that we have everything selected, we can go to Face and we can select Fill. Now you'll notice when we use this, depending on our selection, we might get triangles. I'm going to use Control Z. If instead we use the grid fill, this will give us a nice set of quads. So this is the basic approach to using a vertex modeling. This will allow us to create some curves, and then we can fill in the area between. I'm going to hit Tab to get out of edit mode. I'm going to hide that cube, and I'm going to start a new modeling approach. This time we're going to go to Add, Curve, and note that we have Bezier. Circle, NURBS, NURB Circle, and Path. What we're going to do is I'm going to select Bezier, which automatically puts a Bezier curve in here, and it's located on my XY plane. I'm going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, and you'll notice that our Edit Mode looks a little different. We don't have Vertex, Edge, or Face Selection options, and the menus at the top look different. We have Curve, Control Points, and Segments. The first thing I'm going to do is note that both of these are currently selected, so I'm going to hit R. I'm going to rotate that so that it's roughly in line. You'll notice that it's sort of free rotated. So again, we want to make sure that we use the axis. So R and Z to rotate about Z. And then I'm going to use R and Y to rotate about Y. I'm trying to get this curve to be a little bit more straight up and down. From here, now we need to figure out how to work with a curve. 
So there are vertices on these controls. So we can take each of these and we can use things like G to move them. We can use R to rotate them around. We can use S to scale them. You can think about this as the tangency direction. It's the length of this line is gonna control the influence that it has over the curvature. The rotation is gonna control the direction. And obviously the position is gonna control the position. So one thing we can do is we can extrude from the ends of these, just like we did with our vertex mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to an X-oriented display, and I'm gonna hit E on the keyboard. And you can see that we essentially extruded and what we did was we took the exact orientation of that control. There's another way that we can do this. And note that if we go up to our control points, you can see that we have extrude curve and move as E. And we have this extrude to cursor or add control and the right mouse button. The way that this works is if we go and we just simply move this around, if we hold down control and use the right mouse button, it's going to connect it. And this is a much quicker way for us but you have to note the orientation of each of these. So I'm gonna use Control Z and back up a little bit and leave my curve here. But both of those are great ways for us to add these curves. Instead of repeating that process entirely, I'm gonna hit A to select all. I'm gonna use Shift D, and then I'm gonna move this in the X direction and then G and Z to move it in the Z direction. So now I have both of these curves and one's just a little bit up and in front of the other one. Now I can manipulate these, I can rotate this around just to make the curvature a little bit different. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing over here, rotate that. And as you can see, this method of creating geometry is a little bit more difficult. If I had to choose one additional method, I would probably go with the vertex modeling method. This can be helpful if you have a curve that you're trying to match, but it can also be really difficult for us because the controls in the center right now, those control points, those are going to be based on whatever the geometry was originally. We can add control points or make segments or do all kinds of different things in here, but for the most part, it's just not as quick. But the kicker to this is if we hit A to select all, we don't have a face option. We can't fill between these. So the way that this works is we need to convert these to mesh because right now they're not meshes. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna connect them together. So I'm gonna select both of these and hit F on the keyboard. And that'll fill in between those two. I'm gonna select these two and hit F on the keyboard. So now we've made essentially a closed profile, a Bezier curve that's completely closed. We're gonna go back into object mode with that entire thing selected. Go to object, convert, and we wanna convert it to a mesh. If we go back into our edit mode, now you can see we are presented with a lot of vertices and our normal menus are back. There are a couple things that we can do. We can hit A to select all, and we can do a fill like we did before. And again, we could get a bunch of triangles. If we hit Control Z. We can do a grid fill, which will give us a nice set of UV curves. You can see here that it did a really good job of filling. And there's one more method that we can do. And for this other method, what I'm gonna do is select a couple vertices over here and hit F on the keyboard. I'm gonna to change to edge mode, and if I zoom in on this, you can see we created a little face. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the edge that's going to the opening of our curve, and we're just gonna keep hitting F on the keyboard. It's gonna to continue to fill this. Let's go ahead and zoom out. You can see it can continue to fill this, and this allows us to create some faces and some curvature between each of those curves. So now if we go back into object mode, I can shade smooth, and you can see we've got a pretty smooth result here. Now, again, there are pros and cons to each of these. Now, in this case, if I wanted to come back and start to cut through this, I could do that over here. And you can see that we are able to create these curves. So this is just a quick look at different modeling approaches that you could have in Blender. Again, I prefer creating mesh objects and manipulating them directly, but there are many different ways that we could do this. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.